hey youtube i am back with a, another video so before we jump into this recipe i would like to thank all of my supporters new and old um i have reached 8344 subscribers so i couldn't have done it without you guys so to thank you again newcomers welcome please make sure you like comment and subscribe today we are making red velvet cupcakes with a brown sugar cream cheese ice okay we're getting a little bougie with the red velvet cupcakes so um this was delicious it's very very simple to make um all of my clients enjoyed it family enjoyed it so let's get into this recipe okay so you're going to start off with room temperature buttermilk and then you're going to add vegetable oil one ounce red food coloring vanilla extract white vinegar and then you're going to add in your eggs one at a time and your eggs should also be room temperature oops So now that you have all of your wet ingredients in a bowl, you're going to go ahead and give it a whisk. Um, I use a whisk for this portion because the ham mixer kind of throws um, all of the wet ingredients out of the bowl a little bit and it kind of like splatters everywhere. So just to avoid a mess, I use a hand whisk. Um, now for this recipe, you can use a whisk, you can use a hand mixer or you can use um, a KitchenAid like a stand mixer if you have. I just wanted to accommodate everybody. So now time for our dry ingredients. We're gonna add our sugar to our flour, our sifted cocoa powder, baking soda, salt, And then we're going to go ahead and give that a whisk. Now with your dry, dry ingredients, you also want to make sure that they are well incorporated because if something happens and, you know, let's say, you know, a little dry ingredients, it tend to fly out of the bowl. You don't want to be second guessing like, dang, was that all my cocoa powder or was that all my baking soda? Was that all my salt? No. So you want to make sure that all of these ingredients are well incorporated before um, adding them to your wet. And this is what it looks like when it is done. So it kind of looks like sand, very tan, everything well incorporated and scraped from all the sides of our bowl. So now it's time to add our dry ingredients to our wet. So I personally like to start off adding a cup at a time just to avoid like a poof cloud. Um, if you bake, you know what I mean when I say poof cloud. So until I was comfortable pouring the rest of the entire bowl inside, I started off one cup at a time. And then we're going to come in with our hand mixer and we're going to incorporate everything together. I started off with my hand mixer on low um, just to avoid another poof ball. And then once everything started to get incorporated, I turned up the speed. So you want to be careful not to over um, beat your mix because it'll make your cake or your cupcakes tough. You can use this base um, red, red velvet recipe for cake or cupcakes. So once I'm done mixing, I just take like a bowl scraper and I make sure that there aren't any ingredients stuck on the bottom of the pan. So here I have a 24 count cupcake liner that I have lined with my nice little brown cupcake liners. They just look very much professional and you can't see like the cupcake through. It just looks more presentable. So you're going to go ahead with a ice cream scooper. I have the large one and you're going to fill your cupcake liners up three fourths of the way now red velvet does not rise like other cupcakes do um so it won't spill over if you kind of fill it up so don't be afraid um to be plentiful with our batter 
So my touch of OCD kind of came out and I had to go in and wipe out all the excess just so it won't burn while it's in the oven. And this is what it looks like when all of my cupcake liners are lined up. So we're going to put it in the oven on 325 for 12 to 15 minutes. So my cupcakes are ready and this is what they look like and you can always tell if your cupcake is ready if you touch it and it kind of bounces back then it's ready um i know in the oven it'll still look like it's not as done but it is so they are done and um as you can see some of the edges of my cupcakes kind of were sticking to the baking pan so a tip is how to get rid of this without ruining the cupcake while it's hot take a rubber spatula and you just go around the edges of your cupcakes and boom it releases just that easy but you have to do it while it's hot so now it's time for our icing and i have a eight ounce block of cream cheese one stick of unsalted butter and two teaspoons of vanilla so you want to whip this around um until it's light airy and fluffy and you don't want any thick pieces of cream cheese and then we're going to go ahead and add our brown sugar now with the brown sugar you do have to take your time and beat this in um a little more than you would powdered sugar because it's granulated and you don't want grindy frosting so i did beat um this mixture for five to seven minutes until it was light and airy and i didn't i was able to taste it and it didn't have any a grainy um texture so once i'm done with that i go ahead and scrape down the bottom of the bowl to bring everything back to the center and then we will add our powdered sugar So when going to beat in your powdered sugar, you want to start off super low um, because this is the number one thing that tends to kind of poof back at you. So you want to start off low until you get it kind of worked in with everything else and then feel free to turn your mixer up um, higher. So I did end up adding about two teaspoons of milk to my frosting because it was a little too thick for my liking. So just to kind of loosen it up a little bit, um, I added two teaspoons. So you want to add a little milk at a time because you don't want soup. Um, but I did want mine a little loose than what it was. So this is what it came down to because cream cheese frosting is supposed to be silky and you know not a little more dense than buttercream and this was my final product look how smooth it's not grainy because of the brown sugar like it's perfect so we're gonna go ahead and pipe our cupcakes but this is the consistency that we're looking for as far as icing so before we start piping i did take a cupcake and i just basically crumbled it up and you're going to use this for garnish you can tell how moist the cupcake is already just by looking at the crumbs from our cupcake but this is going to look bomb on top so we're going to put this to the side little you know dollar container so you're going to need a piping bag and i used a 1m wilton piping tip Now, some may be better pipers than others. Um, I've been making treats for a long time, so I pretty much got the gist of it. With cream cheese frosting, it's a lot softer than buttercream, so it does make it a little more difficult to hold its form. So I don't go as high with um, cream cheese just because, you know, it's not as firm as buttercream. So you're going to pipe all of your cupcakes, and then you're going to come in with your cupcake crumbles and you can sprinkle as much or as little as you would like And then I went ahead and started um, garnishing with 
pecans now you can use pecans you can use walnuts you can add coconut on top the possibilities are endless and it's totally up to your preference and your palate so i use pecans you can roast the pecans if you'd like um these were raw and they were amazing so i had to bite into one of these cupcakes and y'all look how moist and fluffy this cupcake was the cream cheese icing was the perfect balance because the cupcake is not too sweet so that is the end of today's recipe i enjoyed the heck out of these cupcakes and if you make this recipe please leave down in the comments below and let me know how you enjoyed them so thank you guys for tuning in to another video don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i will see you guys next time